This video will cover VLANs. VLANs provide a way for us to segment and break up our networks. VLANs are going to provide us a way in which we can group devices on our LANs. Typically we will base these groupings based upon logical connections instead of physical connections. The groups of devices that we create or our subnets that we create will communicate as if they're attached to the same wire. What this means is that our unicast, broadcast, and multicast packets, or any communication, is only going to be forwarded and flooded to those stations that are in the same VLAN or in the same group. So if I had a faculty group, a student group, and a staff group, only faculty computers within the same VLAN would be able to communicate with each other, and only student computers in the student VLAN would be able to communicate with them with each other. VLANs help us separate our traffic from one VLAN to the next. Separating our traffic helps us improve our network performance by creating smaller broadcast domains. In this example over here we have three VLANs. We have VLAN 2 for IT, VLAN 3 for HR, and VLAN 4 for sales. The VLAN 4 for sales here would only be able to send broadcast messages in this particular VLAN. If a broadcast me message was sent on this network, it would not be sent over to the HR VLAN or to the IT VLAN. They are all separate. Typically, separate VLANs will be separate subnets, and that's the case that we have here. The IT VLAN is on the 1002 network, the HR VLAN is on the 1003 network, and the sales VLAN is on the 1004 network. And we know that in networking that we cannot communicate with another network unless we are able to route traffic from one network to the next. So that is why our unicast, broadcast, and multicast messages only stay within our VLANs. One thing to note with our VLANs is that each switch port can only be assigned to one VLAN. So this computer here connected to this port on the switch could only be part of the IT VLAN. This computer could not, pe could not be part of the IT VLAN and the HR uh, VLAN because the port that it's plugged into can only be part of one VLAN. We want to try to segment our networks with VLANs because they offer greater security, cost reduction, performance, they shrink our broadcast domains. This can improve our IT staff efficiency because maybe they only have one VLAN to manage and keep track of makes our project simpler, and again, each VLAN in a switch network is going to correspond to one IP network or a subnet. The different types of VLANs that we see out there are data VLANs. These are going to be the types of VLANs that we will create manually and that are going to carry our user traffic. We have a default VLAN that's created automatically on all Cisco switches. This is VLAN 1. If you start plugging devices into a Cisco switch, they can all communicate with one another because they're all part of the same default VLAN, VLAN 1. When we start creating our own custom VLANs and putting ports into separate VLANs, this is where we start to segment and segregate our traffic. We have the native VLAN. This will be used on our trunk links, which we'll talk about in a minute. This is also the default of uh, VLAN 1, but it should be changed to a separate VLAN number. For example, VLAN 50. All untagged traffic gets, gets sent over the native VLAN. What that means is that if a segment gets sent to a switch without a VLAN tag on it, such as VLAN 1 or 20 or 30 or whatever VLANs you have set up in your network, if it does not have a tag on it, it will then instead be sent over the native VLAN. The management VLAN, is used to manage a switch through Telnet, SSH, or HTTP. By default, this is VLAN 1, but it should also be changed to a separate VLAN, for example, VLAN 99. It is good practice to separate your native VLAN, your management VLAN, and your data VLAN, all to separate numbers. This slide here is showing the command show VLAN brief. This will show you the VLANs that you have set up on your switch. As I said before, by default, all ports are in VLAN 1. VLAN 1 is used for all data traffic, all management traffic, and all native traffic by default. So if you don't set up any VLANs on your switch, VLAN 1 is going to carry all traffic. And you can see here 
how all ports 1 through 24 plus the 2 gigabit Ethernet ports are all part of that same VLAN. One thing to note with VLAN 1 is that it cannot be renamed or deleted. And as I said before, we should change our native management and our data VLAN to be something other than VLAN 1. Voice over IP is beyond the scope of this class, but it's important to note that uh, when you are setting up voice over IP, you do want to use a separate VLAN for that voice traffic. You wouldn't just want to start plugging your IP phones into a switch and have all that traffic go over the default VLAN 1. Voice over IP traffic requires assured bandwidth so that we have good voice quality. We want to have transmission priority over other types of network traffic so that we don't have lost calls or buffering or anything. We want to have the ability to have that voice traffic routed around congested areas of the network. And we need delays of less than 150 milliseconds on our networks. So typically what we'll see in a voice over IP network is a separate VLAN that is dedicated to voice traffic. Usually that port that we set up on the switch for the voice traffic will then be plugged into a Cisco IP phone. The Cisco IP phones usually will incorporate a three port switch right on the phone. One port on that phone connects to the switch which has the voice VLAN set up on it. The other port is an internal port that connects right to the phone and carries the phone traffic. And the third port is an access port that will allow us to connect another device such as a PC. So how this might look in an actual building is in your wiring closet you have a Cisco Catalyst switch, probably a 2960 or a 3560, um, something that's more updated than this graphic here with a wire that goes from the switch port all the way into someone's office that plugs into that Cisco phone. Then that Cisco phone would have another wire that plugs from the phone into their workstation or their PC. Creating a VLAN is a relatively simple process. In global configuration mode, we type VLAN and then we give it a number, such as VLAN 20. We then want to give it a name, such as name students and then we can return back to privilege mode if needed. Once you have your VLAN set up you now want to assign your ports to these VLANs. Without assigning a port to a VLAN this previous step did not do a whole lot for you. So you need to create your VLANs and then assign which ports of that switch are assigned to which VLAN. So in order to do that we go into the port interface by typing interface fast ethernet 01 or whatever the interface happens to be. We type switch port mode access. We then type switch port access VLAN and what the VLAN ID is. We can also assign an IP address to it if we want to be able to remotely manage that switch. So here's an example where we want to assign port fast ethernet 18 to VLAN 20. So we get into interface fast ethernet 18. We type in switch port mode access, which makes it an access port and not a trunk port or not a routed port. So it makes it a, a plain old access port. We then type switch port access VLAN 20 to make it part of that VLAN. When working with VLANs, VLAN trunks become very important to us. VLAN trunks are used between switches so that same VLAN devices communicate even if they're connected to different switches. And I'll show you an example of what I mean by that here in just a minute. A VLAN trunk is going to carry all VLAN traffic, so it's going to carry traffic for more than one VLAN. A VLAN trunk is not associated with any VLANs, and neither is the trunk port used to establish that trunk link. There are some different protocols out there used to carry this traffic over the VLAN trunks. But the IEEE 802.1Q is the most popular, and this is the default on the Cisco switch. You can explicitly set this on the switch, but with the current iOS versions, you do not have to do that. So let's take a look at this example here. We have three data VLANs, VLAN 10, which is the faculty staff, VLAN 20, which is the students, and VLAN 30, which is the guests. We also have VLAN 99, which they set up for their management and their native VLAN. 
In best practice, we should probably separate the management and the native VLAN to be separate, but here they have them in the same one. Notice how each VLAN corresponds to a separate subnet. The faculty and staff are on the 172.17.10 network, the students are on the 172.17.20 network, and the guests are on the .30 network. In this particular example, all the devices plugged into switch 2 here would not be able to communicate with one another because they are all in different VLANs. So this faculty PC, even though it's plugged into the same switch, would not be able to communicate with the student PC, which in turn would not be able to communicate with this guest PC. However, we do have another segment of the network over here, which has another faculty PC plugged into, into switch 3. So PC4 should be able to communicate with PC1. And in order to make that happen, the ports that we have connecting the, the different switches together would have to be set up as trunk links. These trunk links would then be able to carry the VLAN traffic from one switch to the next so it can get from one PC over to the other. So as soon as I set in this example fast ethernet 01 of switch 1 and switch 2 and fast ethernet 3 of switch 1 and switch 3 because those are the ports uh, that we're using here. As soon as we configure those as trunk links it can now carry the VLAN traffic from this switch up to switch 1 down to switch 3 over to PC4. Since this is a trunk link and and by default, trunk links will carry all VLAN traffic. All PCs and all VLANs would be able to send their traffic over the trunk links to get to this other segment on the network. So now student PC2 would be able to communicate with student PC5 over the use of this trunk link. So if you have separate segments of your network where you have VLANs, or in other words, you have VLANs spread across multiple switches, you want to set those links that are connecting the switches together as VLAN trunks to send your traffic across those. To configure a trunk link, we go into the interface that we want to make a trunk, make, trunk link and we do the switch port mode trunk. Remember before we did the switch port mode access command to make it an access port. Well now we can use the switch port mode trunk command to make it a trunking port. Whenever we set up a trunking port we want to assign the native VLAN uh, number. That native VLAN is going to be used to send over all untagged traffic. So all untagged traffic gets sent over the trunk link over that native VLAN. Uh, we then optionally can set the, the list of allowed VLAN traffic over those trunk links. As I said before, uh, by default all traffic is allowed over VLAN. So if you wanted to specifically set uh, which traffic is allowed over those trunk links, you can use this optional command. If you'd like to verify your trunk configuration, you can do a show interface on the port that you set as the trunk, and you'll notice here that uh, the mode should be set to trunk. We can see our encapsulation method. As I said before, the default is the dot one q that's the most popular you could explicitly set that uh, back in here in the interface mode, but as I said with the new iOS, you don't have to do that anymore. Uh, we can also take a look at our uh, native VLAN here as well. So in terms of best practices for VLANs, and in particular our trunk links that we just talked about, we want to disable that auto negotiation on our trunk ports. We can go into the switch port that we will be using to connect our switches together and do the switch port no negotiate. And then we will just manually assign our ports to whatever mode we want them to be by using either that switch port mode access for our access ports or the switch port mode trunk for the ports that we want to become trunk links. Other things that we want to do for our VLANs is move all ports from VLAN 1 and assign them to a not in use VLAN. So if I have a switch that has 24 ports and 20 of them are not in use, I should create a VLAN such as VLAN 900, maybe call it VLAN unused for example, and move those 20 ports into 
that VLAN. Also on those ports, since they're not being used, I would want to shut them down. Go into each port and do a shutdown on it. Again, we want to separate our management and our data traffic. We want to change the management VLAN to another VLAN other than VLAN 1. Same goes for our native VLAN. We want to make sure that only devices in the management VLAN can connect to the switches remotely. We should set up our switches to only accept SSH connections uh, remotely instead of plain text telnet.